All right. So, okay. Here's the situation. My parents went away on a week's vacation. Um, this, okay, somebody asked about adding slugs to a motor. All right. So this is, I, I know you're not going to like my answer, but it's not, it's not for fucking kids, man. It's not just something you just do. Now there are people, um, I forget his name, Brad something or other, Shulky, I think his name is. He was doing all kinds of cool shit. And then like, I guess he got tired of people dogging on him. And then all of a sudden he became like this super sellout for like, he was all like pioneers rad, you know, only buy brand stuff. And then he's it turned into a piece of shit. So, and he, uh, I forget what he was doing, but I ended up having to block him. So just don't be a dick. If you don't like something that I'm doing, or uh, if it's controversial, talk to me. I'm a human being, okay? Don't just be a jackass. Anyways, um, uh, speaking of, the, he's one of the jackasses that would work with live magnets. I don't recommend that to anybody. Uh, if you want to pinch a finger off, lose a big piece of flesh, just work with live magnets. It'll be fun. Uh, this one I'm doing, uh, this, is the, okay, this is the mod we just did. I think we had this in another video. <clears throat> this is a quad stack that I'm making. Uh, I think we, we called that the, the Vato Extreme. Okay, so this used to look like this. Now the base plate I'm using in this is a little bit smaller in diameter, and that's because I don't have it. I don't know where these are. I'm sure there's a pallet of them somewhere. Oh, now I remember where the pallet's at. Anyways, uh, so what we do at the machine shop is it's easier. I, I asked them originally, I said, hey, can you just cut this off? And then you gotta, sometimes you gotta flatten it and then they drill and tap. Uh, in this case, they just use three number 10, 32 bolts. Um, they said, you know, it's easier if we just uh, put this on a lathe and then trim it down. And what it does is it gives you a little bit extra. And then basically it sits on there like that. You know, you gotta imagine this is gone and this is just a cylinder and then it sits on top and then they bolt it in place. And then if I, if I need them to mill it down, I can. And that's actually what I did on this one. This one is for a Super Neo 8 that I'm building. And uh, this is what we needed. So then you can go back at your slug collection, hopefully not live, and you can decide what magnets or slugs, as they're called, you can use. So that's what adding slugs to a, a motor are like that's one way to do it the other way that i do it uh in the larger ones such as this one if you look really close i don't know if you can see focus there's layers okay so what i've done is i didn't want to the first ones that we did we welded and turned out to be people can't weld for shit and the other thing is that it doesn't hold great and so i wanted something that was surefire and would do a really good job and what we realized is if we um are going to use this method we need to it's not called, I, I call it lapping because i i used to work in semiconductor and the company that i used to work for would make lappers and what it is is this, it's a grinding surface grinding and so what i do is i use these washers these top plates that are meant for like eights and tens that are uh inch and a half voice coils very small and so what i do is basically here on this one this we did exactly this they put them on top they drill each one, they have a jig that they can drill in precision, and then they bolt them on there. And then they put the whole thing on a lathe and then they turn it down. In this case, uh, I told them this one actually used to be four inch. See, it used to come out to here. So they actually took off all that material and took it down. This one is three and a half. This one is the dub seven uh, T yoke. And so I give them a, you know, a tolerance. I say it needs to be, you know, whatever, so many millimeter. They use metric or they use um, standard. Uh, cause they're old schooler guys. Uh, they don't like change either, but I often uh, give it to them in metric cause I want to stick it to them. And, uh, and then I also give them the, uh, ID of the top plate too. And you got to calculate that out on what it's supposed to be so that you know your tolerances. And I went through that just now with the, uh, the gap, uh, dimensions video. So I hope that answers your question on multiple ways to do this. Another way is to just uh, weld it. Now, if you're working again with live magnets, I don't recommend that. And it's not just willy nilly, you know, like let's say this is already charged and, and your top plate came off, right? Um, 
I don't even suggest you know putting a new top plate on, even though you should probably use a, like PVC for a shim or some sort of non-metallic shim, because uh, it's it's a pain in the butt, man. Uh, the best way is to send it out to be magnetized uh, by somebody with a magnetizer. Now, there's actually more magnetizers out there than you think there are. Just most of them aren't used for uh, <laughs> stupid reasons like this, like making subwoofers. Subwoofers are very unpopular, even though they may be popular in your life. But as far as an industry goes, industry-wide, especially American industry, zero, none. You're talking about only a handful of companies that actually have them. You're talking about like Incriminator, who is it? Yeah, Nick from Incriminator, he buys and refurbs them and sells them to individuals. Uh, same with me, I we sold the one to, um, oh crap, Linear, Linear Power. Linear Power, wanted they wanted to revamp or re reinvent the, the brand and they wanted to start making their own woofers and they needed a little magnetizer and I was able to provide it to them. So great, but for the most part, you, what you gotta do is just shop around and look for magnetic surfaces in your area. And if you're in a big metro area like, you know, Chicago, Houston, L.A., New York, you know, you can find them. It's not that hard. And so you got to find it and then, you know, ship the motor to them, have them zap it. We charge like 25 bucks a zap. And usually I zap it three or four times just to make sure. You can also contact these other uh, builders, you know, like Phi. Phi has their own. Uh, so does Sundown. You can ask them. They got their own zapper and, you know, they'll probably charge you double that. Um, plus return shipping and a bunch of other stuff. So is it valuable? Yes, that's well worth saving a finger and also making sure that it's gonna be saturated and it's done right. So that's what I recommend for adding slugs to a motor. If you really wanna add slugs to a motor and also extending the pole. I only recommend it in certain, certain circumstances, not certainly not for production. This is all just me trying to use up a lot of ferrite that we got from Volcano and making the best of it because I can't afford the 40, 50 grand that China wants to, to import one 12, you know, one model, one skew, and it's only in dual four, you know, that, cause that's what they fucking want. They want at least 500 to a thousand pieces and, and then shipping is going to kill you. And then tariffs and all that kind of stuff. You, sometimes it sits in, um, uh, what's it called? C c customs. Yeah, sometimes it sits in customs for weeks because uh, they think you're smuggling drugs. So then every day that it's in customs, you have to pay. You have to pay more money, more storage fees. So importing is not, you know, for the faint of heart either. Now, if you do something on Alibaba and they're like, hey, we can do this for 500 chipped or whatever, go for it. Fucking go for it, man. Just start importing and you'll, you know, you'll see what happens. And, and if you flip it and make some money, good for you. Good job. Uh, but for the rest of us, this is what I have to do in order to survive and do cool shit and still keep uh, my pants on. Because otherwise I'm going to have to sell my pants and sell my asshole. And that's how that goes. Oh, this is a... Uh, this was an old MCM Electronics. Remember them? They were fucking great. Um, their inventory got absorbed into the parent company, which is Newark. And so now you got to go to Newark.com, uh, which is also owned by Avnet which is like a computer company, semiconductor company. Anyways, they made a 21, and this is the leftovers of that. They had several columns of ferrite going around. Very short, uh, very short pole. It was just bolted on. Uh, this is the T-yoke now, see? Bottom plate, now it's a T-yoke, right? Because if you flip that upside down, it looks like a T. All right, and then so this is the top washer, also known as the top plate. See? See how that fits on there? That's because that's the gap, and that's where the coil we used to float. Now, we want to do something really beefy, like this. This one is the uh, 4HP uh, replica coil that I had made many years ago. Um, this was the same one used in the TC Sounds uh, TC5200. And if we want to use this coil, that's, I'm just saying if... Uh, there's several ways to do it, and uh, one of the ways is to do it like the Rockford T3, which was designed by uh, Wayne and, I want to say Glenn, I forget his name. I've never met him, but he used to work at Diamond. Both him and Wayne used to work at Diamond. Anyways, what they did on the T3, the Rockford T3, is they used a big fucking slug of Neo like this in the pole. 
And then I think uh, there's a top plate number one, top plate number two. And then there's, I think, two, I don't know, something like that. I, it's around here somewhere. I, I thought about just milling it down and uh, turning it into something I can use on a four-inch coil rather than the five-inch coil. But anyways, that's uh, basically a version of uh, the Neo, what is it? Sundown uh, Nightshade version four. Version three? Version four uh, is the Neo Cup motor, uh, which is a version of this where they put the Neo in the center and then the bottom, in this case, I don't want to lift that. Basically, the the, the T yoke comes up like that, and then that's your. Uh, this becomes your. This would be your positive, and then that would be your negative, and it creates a little gap, or I shouldn't say little. It's pretty big, but uh, and then I think they use a three inch coil on that one. So and that one's pretty powerful. However, I don't like the neo in the center of the hot fucking coil, and then some people will argue. Uh, well, if you're getting your woofers up to three, four, five hundred degrees, then you're doing it wrong. That is correct, but that's not really what happens out in the field. So in the field, they abuse the shit. And then the problem is that the Neo that's available right now is still heat sensitive. Um, update though, a couple years back, uh, Toyota announced that they would actually, they were developing a, uh, a different, a Neo that is tempered or is heat resistant to use in their hybrid and electric vehicles. And I think they actually make more, for, I, I got to check up on that, but I think they actually make more licensing it out to companies like Tesla who need a uh, ferroviscic material like neodymium inside their motors to make them more sensitive and more reactive. So, but I will do a checkup on that. But this is this video. Um, don't pinch your fingers. Do, do something else. Like just recone the woofer. Like just, just do that. Just get good at that. And then we'll see. All right? Be good. Bye.